Real quick before we get going, got to do a quick shout out to Mr. Nathaniel Kalk. Kalk. Nathan Kalk. Uh, he does some amazing 3D printing stuff. He printed this logo for us. Yeah, that's badass. Um, these other ones. Oh, Oop, shit. I got it. It's durable, too. Uh, <laughs> th- that other stuff that's down there. Um, the dude has, like, he prints life-size, like, 1v1, like, Marvel characters and DC characters. He printed this uh, Batman that literally looks like Batman, Batman walked off the fucking screen. And standing, <laughs> I would hope it looked like Standing Batman. in your fucking living room. <laughs> it's crazy stuff. It's uh, sick. Go check him out. Um, he will do custom work. Like I said, I sent him the 2d version of our logo and he made it 3d and printed it out. Took him like three days. Um, super, super good guy to work with. Super reasonably priced as well. And how do you get um, a hold of him? I will put his, uh, I'll put a link to his, uh, Facebook post on there in the, in the description, but I'll also throw his email address on there. Okay. Um, but yeah, man, it's, it's cool shit. Big Red Junkies. Day by day, day by day, he is better than me. 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 Oh, man, woman and child, he just turned this stadium inside out. National Signing Day has come and gone. Thank God. And it wasn't without anything. We didn't we didn't think the week before, at least I didn't think the week before. I was like, yeah, National Signing Day, like whatever. The first one I think is the big one, even though they call it Early Signing Day, just because it seems like every big name out there goes. Well, and also most of them want to enroll early. So if you're going to enroll in January, the beginning of January, just gonna sign they're going to sign in December. Yep. Just makes sense. Yeah. But the one that, I mean, we, we, the last time we got together, we talked about our recruiting class so far, our transfer class so far. Yeah. We actually have a couple things to talk about. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm excited about it. Plus, not, not only did we add a couple players, we added a new coach. I think that's kind of a big deal. I don't know. Let's go there first. The coach? Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 was, it was exactly what we needed. Glenn Thomas. Well, and a lot of people, I know a lot of people were all up in a frenzy thinking that we were going to get, what's his name, uh, the... Uh, Houston coach. Yeah, and I'm totally just... I, I can't remember. Yeah. I, it sounds like he I, might still come on as an analyst. Yeah. Um, and I think that was the plan from the beginning because it sounded like this Glenn Thomas thing, especially if you watched the press conference from yesterday with Rule, it sounded like Glenn, Glenn Thomas was in the works for multiple weeks prior to the Steelers' season ending. And out of respect, he didn't let they, any there, of that There out. was about two weeks before the NFL season was over, uh, the regular season that is, his name kind of started getting circulated and... Well, it was kind of one of those, There, there's a prominent name in the NFL that is still, they're waiting to see if they're going to make the playoffs, because, you know, the Steelers were kind of on that, you know. They were on the bubble until on, the end. Yeah, on that. They fence. had to have the right thing happen, yeah. the right people had to lose. And then it was, and then his name kind of started coming out as the weeks were progressing into the playoffs, and then it was like five seconds after the Steelers lost. Yep. Yeah, Glenn T- Thomas is going to be here. <laughs> like, yep. So, yeah. I mean, it, and everybody was trying to figure out exactly what his role was going to be as far as uh, just quarterback. Well, and then where was Satterfield going to go? Because obviously we were going to need to move Satterfield over to a position coach because we would be over the limit on. And didn't rule say he's, go- he's going back to being tight ends, tight ends yep. which is what he originally was going to be. Yep. And then they hired Weger last year. Yep. And it had already been all shifted. They'd already been working all off season, basically, because Wager got canned. What was that? A month before the season started. Well, so he, Satterfield was going to be the tight ends coach slash offensive coordinator, and uh, they were targeting Jake Peets to be the quarterbacks coach uh, coming into the staff. But Peets was weighing a decision to go to the NFL. He ends up going with, to the Rams to be their quarterbacks coach. Obviously, a great decision. Not just to- getting to go work with Matt, Matthew Stafford. And that's McVay. Awesome. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's kind of what you should do. Yeah. Uh, so once that fell through with Jake Peets, um, they were kind of almost in scramble mode. I'm, you know, I'm not trying to say that they were desperate or anything else like that, but then that's when they made the transition to hire Wager, move Satterfield to the quarterback spot, and then 
what happened, what happened as far as with Wager, and then they had to pivot from there. Yeah. Got drunk. Texas drunk. Yep. In downtown Lincoln. That doesn't work. No. Not if you're going to drive your car. No. <laughs> it sucks, but... Uh, for anybody that can't remember. Um, but, now this this dude that's coming in, I mean, it was an obvious move. Kind of... You know, this is something we griped a little bit about with Frost, that he, he liked his buddies a lot. Mm-hmm. I think Rule has better buddies. Yes. They're at least more experienced, I should say. I, I was they're literally more, just going to use that word. They're more tenured in the coaching profession. <laughs> they're more coaching buddies and less drinking buddies. Yes. <laughs> or or, or, or coke buddies. buddies. Yeah, they, they, don't, they don't sniff it together. We sniff together, I was we stick trying together. to be polite. <laughs> so why start now? <laughs> yeah. Stop snowing Jesus, outside. you're on the wrong fucking show, man. <laughs> God damn. Speaking of. But not in, the thing is, not just that. It was you know the experience of college. Glenn Thomas has been around in the NFL at a bunch of different stops. So his yeah. experience level top to bottom is very impressive in my mind. But. Yeah. No, he's got he's got good stints with the Falcons uh in the late 2000s, early 2010s. Um then he was with uh he was with Rule and Temple for a hot minute. He was with Rule and Baylor for a hot minute. Uh both as quarterback's coach and offensive coordinator in Temple and then co-offensive coordinator with Satterfield. Mm-hmm. Um but I think he was the play caller, wasn't he? Uh, down at Baylor, uh, he was not. He was not uh, co-offensive coordinator in Baylor with Satterfield. It is. Uh, it was Jeff Nixon who was the. Oh, my bad, my bad. Coordinator in uh, Baylor, but yeah. And then he went over to UNLV to, to kind of have the coordinator job all to himself. He's still coaching quarterbacks at the time. Mm-hmm. Then hit Arizona State as the you know that was kind of his big leap to. Hey, I'm a prominent offensive coordinator all by myself. Let's go tra- ahead and try this out. Only one year, obviously, and then there was a coaching change. Yeah. And then he went, wound up, you know, going to try and help the mess that's up in Pittsburgh. Didn't help anything that they had all those injuries. I don't think you can really look at, like, you're not going to be able to look at the quarterback play from the Steelers last year and think that that's going to be indicative of what we're going to no. see next well, year. Well, and he also wasn't just the, I mean, he was, he was kind of more of the NFL version of an analyst. So it's not like he was the position coach for a Kenny Pickett type, you know. So... I'm not going to pin any of that shit on him. Regardless yeah. of the mess that's up there, having some time to work with Mike Tomlin doesn't hurt. Nope. No, not at all. Yeah. It's like anybody who's had a chance to go work with a Belichick or a Pete Carroll or a Nick Saban yeah. or any of those. It, you're still getting good experience yep. there regardless of what you're doing. Yes. And, well, and the, the other thing, too, is Rule has a has a connection with Tomlin as well. Uh, Rule called it, called it out and talked about how he, how he has respect for him in that press conference. I love the press conference yesterday. Rule looked... The part of a guy who has just got done running marathon after marathon after marathon for the last month and a half. He did minus, look a little tired. Minus, well, he looked tired as shit, but it, he also, a it also looks like yeah. he, he, ain't, he ain't been eating real healthy. He's been on the road. Yeah. He's been a little stressed out and ain't been eating healthy. He looked like he's put on a couple of LBs. Uh, he, he, he was, it was also your very stereotypical Matt Rule press conference where you could tell that he went in there with a few bullet points that he wanted to make sure to bring up at oh, some yeah. point. And as soon as the door even remotely opened up yeah, a little like bit. Like the Satterfield thing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did you did you get to catch the press yeah, conference? No. Because the there, moment that they were, he was like, he, he was like, now let me get this straight. Let me make this clear. <laughs> he, he was like I, the Kool-Aid man coming through the yeah, wall. He was like, up, we're talking about this now. Because they, <laughs> he, they, they were asking him, like, so what are the duties of Glenn Thomas? Like, what is he going to do? So, are they, well, is he, simple you know, goes, is he, yeah. he going to be calling any plays? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is he going to have any, is he going to have any, uh, yep. any say so in the play calling? And <laughs> rules. Was like he even kind of smirked a little bit. He's like, he's like, I need to set the record straight. Yep. He's just waiting for somebody to well, ask any sort of question. Yep. If if you he knew it was coming. Yeah. Well, and if you're Matt Rule, that's the absolute right way to handle it. If you're trying to make sure that your staff doesn't feel uneasy. Yeah. It, and that also tells you that he still has full faith in Satterfield because if he didn't, I think that he'd be, you know, he'd be letting him know, hey, for now this is what we're doing. There was no for now. This is what we're doing. This is. This is what's happening going forward. You, you, I remember when Glenn Thomas first got announced, and we were texting, and you said uh, something to the effect of, I don't know, remember if you asked or if you said it, does this put heat on Satterfield as an offensive coordinator? I did. I said, do you guys think in, it puts heat on him? You know, they co another o- offensive coordinator under rule in the past. And I didn't think so because I think the pressure on Satterfield is external, not internal. And with the way Rule phrased all that stuff yesterday, to, for me, it solidifies that. There is no... 
I'm not saying that there's I'll, no I'll pressure on Satterfield because obviously there's going to be pressure on all these coaches to win and they want to win and all that stuff. But the bulk of the pressure to succeed on Satterfield and his play calling and everything else and his offense is more external than it is internal. Yeah, I, I also don't think that that's Rule's job to put that sort of pressure on them. That pressure's already there. Exactly. Yeah. But Rule's job that's, is it's Rule's the head coach. All that pressure should be on him, and he should just give all of his coaches the tools that they need to do the best job that they can. And that's exactly what he does. Absolutely. And, and you can tell that's where he's going. That's, he did in that that's just what I was going to say about that is, is the pressure's there. And I don't think the pressure has changed from day one to no. day 380. I don't think, you know, there's there's been no change in rules demeanor. And it's shown with certain staff members that he's already eliminated, whether it be assistants or some of his, the analysts, I guess, secondary executive yeah. team that I yeah. guess I would call them. I don't, I don't know how else you'd say it, but like the different guys that he's let go that it's like, hey, look, this, you're not doing what we need you to do. You're, you're not. You know, whether it be Wager last year, hey, you you stepped out of line. We can't have that here. I'm sorry. Goodbye. Things like that. It's he's he's moved on from people very swiftly when he needs to, uh, and I feel like that's not his pressures on Satterfield is not going to change, and he's going to defend him until the moment he decides it's time to make a change, and then the media is going to find out about it at the same time the rest of us do. Yep. And that's uh, uh, that's how it should be. If he's not yes. your guy, he shouldn't be on your staff. That's no. that's what so a treat him like your does. guy until he, you know. That's what a great leader will do. That, that's why I don't think that Satterfield's on any sort of a hot seat this year. Maybe after next year. Well, not from rule. Well, I that's mean, what, that's what I'm saying. You know, I I'm more focused on that because fans are going to yell and scream, and that and we probably will too. But that's what fans do. That's our job. But. Something I don't know that, again, internally, I don't think he's on any sort of a hot seat. Something, though, that makes me question a little bit, like, and I, I guess I guess this is more of a, a, a backup statement for me, is we saw Rule almost bend to the pressure or listen to the pressure from the outside last year. Definitely listen. We saw it when it came to the quarterback situation. We saw it when it came to... Um, a couple different things that he did as far as play calling and things like that goes throughout the season. And I don't know if that's him recognizing, hey, this is an intelligent fan base and when there's pressure, you know, it's one of those, uh, you know, where there's where there's smoke, there's fire typically. Maybe it was just that the fan base is getting there the same time that he's also getting there to make that decision. Because we do, we, we, have smart, we have a smart fan base. Mm-hmm. There's fan bases out there that it's just, Oh, we lost fucking fire everybody. Fuck that. And, and don't get me wrong, we have those stupid yeah, I was ass just fans. Say. We do, but the major the, the the majority of our fan base, it's yes. why we get, you know, it's why you have rivals rating Nebraska, the most rabid and intelligent yep. fan base and things like that. Because we do have fans that just like why why do people support our show? Nebraska people want to absorb as much content about Nebraska football as they possibly can. And that's not something you find most places, and that's also leads to our fans being a little more on the intelligence side. It, of it's one of the reasons why, no matter how bad our records have been over the last handful of years, I still continue to say Nebraska is still a relevant program because Absolutely. you will always see them at the bottom line on the TV screen, if whether it's good or bad. If news happens, they will always be on the, in the headlines on ESPN. They're always going to be in the top right corner of ESPN. Exactly. It's always going to be up they there. Are always, they are still a relevant program because of the fans. If you are a smart fan, hit the subscribe button for us. Support us. It's all we ask. Hit a like. Hit subscribe. If you, if you want to become a member, become a member. But subscribe for us. We need to get those numbers up. But, man, I'm telling you, when it, when it comes to... Getting this higher for Glenn Thomas, I think it's huge just from a standpoint of, and Rule said it yesterday in the press conference, a dedicated quarterback's coach that's not going to be pulled away. Yep, That was part of the explanation he used to talk about why Sat is still 100% calling the plays. I don't want my quarterback's coach being anything but focused on the quarterbacks. Especially if Satterfield's going to stay up in the booth calling the plays. Yeah. And you can keep your quarterback's coach down on the field to be able to talk to your quarterback. That's another big thing because... We heard it last year with uh, Heinrich Harburg talking about how once Satterfield made the move upstairs, they asked him, like, you know, how is it now basically you have to deal with Rule face-to-face rather than Satterfield? And Harburg you jokingly no- was like, <laughs> I'd kind of rather have it be Satterfield. You get no head coach buffer, <laughs> A. Exactly. But you're also getting no in-game coaching. Yeah. Like, yes, Rule was still going to say stuff to him, yeah. but it it's not... 
probably a lot of times in the heat of the moment the most constructive way mm-hmm. to do it. So it it's going to be a positive all around, I think. It'll be interesting, the comments that he made about Harburg, again, he's he made it through talking about the quarterbacks, talking about who's coming back and how Glenn Thomas is going to work with the quarterbacks. He, he mentioned Harburg a couple different times by name, and he's still got a couple years, and we want to develop him, this and that. He mentioned the young guys as the young guys. He didn't bring up Dylan Raiola. He didn't bring up Danny Kalen. So I thought that was kind of interesting. It's hopefully not a sign that he's still planning on riding the Harburg train in, into the season. But, uh, you know, I don't we're know not. how you can, but he, he is. <laughs> it seems like it. <laughs> it seems it seems like he thinks that's the thing. He he also kind of addressed the whole. You know, he was asked directly, "Are you planning? Are you still planning on trying to add another quarterback?" And he said, "No, not really. I've never like I've never had more than three. I've had four one time, and it's really difficult when you have more than three to get them the reps that they need." That's how he described it. And I thought that was so interesting when you you look at other programs that are carrying five, six, seven quarterbacks on their roster, and we're already running a lot of a lot more drills in our practices than what most teams do. It's interesting. I, you know, not to get uh, into a huge, deep quarterback. The thing is, when you have only three scholarship quarterbacks and two of them are true freshmen, whether you like Harburg or not as the quarterback, he has to stay a quarterback this year. He has to. Yeah. He has to. There's and no he, doubt. And he has to be an option. Not run the option, but he has to be a quarterback option. And that goes back to... What is Glenn Thomas going to be able to do with somebody like him? Well, there has to be something that Rule has seen in his ability to throw the ball, at least in practice, mm-hmm. that has told him, "Hey, I think he might be able to do it." If in the given given the right situation, which you know we're going to get there in a little bit, but the the way he's already talking about Banks is coming in and already being a leader and already helping raise the bar and things like that. Um, and with how I feel about Banks, man, that, that stuff. That made you so- super excited. Oh, God. <laughs> I got me going. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> but he, you know, he, he specifically decided to, to call him out and talk about him. And, and having the extra guys around, Malachi is going to have an extra year. Uh, the other guys that, you know, that, that were young, the Jalen Lloyds that got an opportunity to play some, but were true freshmen, they're going to have that seasoning from last year. Plus, then you dump on two season really good wide receivers, potentially a third, you, you look at it and you're like, I, I like the extra options. Mm-hmm. Hopefully he's going to have some more open guys to throw to, which Satterfield moving up into the box seemed to give us a little bit more open wide receivers that are getting, you know, we talked for the first half of last season, hey, these guys can't get open. Nobody can get open. Billy Kemp can't get open, can't get open. Hopefully we have a little bit better. And time even if they sure. could get open, did we have a guy that could get him the ball? You know, it it was well, a yeah combination of a lot of things. But yes, it was it was a struggle of even if you got open, how long were you open for? Like, were you open long enough for the guy to get you the ball? So I I, I thought especially about this, a guy that's skittish. I was thinking about this watching the Green Bay Dallas playoff game. Jordan Love had lights out stats in that game. He did not play lights out. Like he did not throw pretty balls nonstop. He he kind of reminded me of some some of the moments we saw from Harburg, but the schemes that they were running were getting guys open with like a quarter of the field. Like there was there was one, I think it was on a touchdown or it was it was a super long play down to at least the three or four yard line, where the guy literally had to come back like four yards to the ball, and there was nobody within the camera shot around him. It was a duck of a ball thrown up. It was a terrible throw. Not not on the run whatsoever. Guy came back for it, but he had the time. The scheme got him open. The The wide receiver was open enough that it made Jordan Love look just fine. If we have things like that going on, okay, Harburg's going to be okay. He can, he can, if, he, if he can hold on to the ball, he's going to be okay. Mm-hmm. I'd rather see Dylan Raiola be so dynamic and undeniable that you have to put him on the field. Well, when, I mean... Rail will be a starter. When I say we need him as an option, the likelihood because of the history of Nebraska, and I know just because it always has been doesn't mean it always will be, but we don't go through seasons with just one quarterback. So when, hopefully not, but when more than likely some, but something happens, whether it's a, you know an extended injury or just out for a few plays just yeah. to get something fixed up, he needs to be an, a viable option. Yeah, yeah, and I think he will be. 
I, I, one thing as far as the press conference goes, I was a little concerned about. Um, I know where you're going with this rule talking about how Micah Mazuka Mazuka has a long way to go with as far as doing things. The it right almost way. sounded like an attitude issue. Yep, and, and it, coming in and expect it, the way that I took it was he came here expecting that he was already good enough to walk on and start and. He wasn't going to have to fight for his job, and he wasn't going to have to do things the way that we want to do them. Yeah, I don't know. I, that was that was a little concerning to me with such an experienced guy. And by the way, thanks to the YouTube commenter for the correct pronunciation of his last name, because we butchered it last time. So We sure did. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. It's spelled the way that it's spelled. There's nothing I can do about that. But yes, thank you for that shout. But let's talk a little bit more about what he said about banks. There are, you know, they're in the middle of doing the contest stuff that's already going on. Mm-hmm. He talked about how they're, they're, you know, it, it's a, it's a player voting system. But he said last year where we come in and we're doing this and no one really knows what to expect. A lot of them were just voting for the best players yep. or the, or the, their, friends. the their friends and the, the guys that have been there for a long time. And now you see them actually like they understand the system. They understand what's going on for it. I thought it was interesting because he's, to me, he, he wasn't doing it intentionally by any means, but like Fedoni, if you remember, that was when Fedoni was like shining last year. He came out and that's, you know, everybody was talking about how he's was, he was the points leader and all this stuff. It's like, was he kind of calling out Fedoni as like being kind of a fake <laughs> top end guy last year? Like what was going on? there? Because well, like a guy like MJ Sherman, I remember was a, was one of the top guys as well last year and he mm-hmm. was a newcomer that I remember that being a big thing that, you know, a guy that has never been here doesn't know most of these players. Uh, acting the way that he is and buying in already was a, yeah. such a big deal. Well, and that's it ties right into what he was talking about with Banks. Because mm-hmm. the, the fact that you've got a guy like that that has that production that is not, you know, it's it's hard to see a college wide receiver play two complete seasons without an injury. Yeah. Or without missing any games. Maybe he tweaked an ankle. I don't know. Especially but Especially here at Nebraska, because that's what happens to most of our wide receivers, too. Well, and it's not <laughs> like, he, like, like we talked about with him in our last show. It's not like he was playing in a in a slough conference. No. He's playing in the ACC. Like he was playing big boy football. It's, mm-hmm. it's good stuff. And I'm excited about it. And two years ago, he had a real quarterback with Sam Hartman. So I don't know who played down there last year. Uh, some Bill Smith. It wasn't Sam Hartman. <laughs> no, Keanu Reeves uh, was up in, uh, up in Notre Dame. Yeah. <laughs> that's what that's dude. That's kind of what he looks like. He did. Vegas really. calls him John Wick. Uh, he's like twice as thick, but yeah. There's that. Keanu Reeves. John Thick. Sandwich. John Thick. <laughs> be his name in the NFL. That's fucking funny. John Thick. I'm sending this clip to Vegas. John Thick. It's not John Wick. It's John Thick. <laughs> it's not it. quite the assassin. I'll send it to Peyton. She's got a big old crush on him. Oh, boy. John Wick or, oh, or Sam Hartman. Or, or Vegas. John Thick. <laughs> the other guy that we added uh, that I think everybody, including Rule, uh, apparently up until Friday, was surprised by. That uh, I think it was uh, even today. How did I? How did yesterday. I? How did I? How do you? How do you say it? Ke- Keona Wilhite. Keona Wilhite. I don't know. No, somebody else is going to tell us we fucked yeah, that up too. Uh, Who cares? All right, correct us. It sure. was. I, I thought. I, you know, some of the some of the sites have him as a four star guy. He was headed to Washington, then Kalen DeBoer goes to Alabama. Obviously, a bunch of people decommitted. Mm-hmm. He was one of them, and then it seemed like he was headed to UCLA. But then with the comments that Chip Kelly has made since the end of the season about, you know, uh, I don't Getting like the hell out of well, college. I don't, yeah. I, don't like, I don't like the way the college football game's going, and then all of a sudden he starts interviewing for OC jobs in the NFL. Yeah. But apparently, didn't you say an OC job in college, too? No. He, he, was, he was. I thought you said uh, something about the an commander's OC job. job, and then Kingsbury took that one. And I read today that he's one of the last two candidates for the Seahawks. Seahawks job. job. Wouldn't it be funny if he wound up back in Philly as the OC <laughs> after being there as the head coach five years ago? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of. Because Kingsbury I, was supposed to take the Philly job, and then what's his name got hired in Washington, and so then he went and took that. I thought Kingsbury was going to take the uh, Raiders job, and then he backed out of that one. Maybe that's the one I'm thinking of. Maybe. But, uh, They're all kind of the same job, yeah. if you think about it. Yeah. I. It was. It was. I said this before we started recording. I was like, I'm gonna save it for the show. It was like, thank you, Chip Kelly, for waffling like crazy because he was gonna go to UCLA. Yeah, I thought it was signed, sealed, news. delivered, done yeah, last was, Thursday. He was gonna go to UCLA, and then it's like, well, you know what? If you're not gonna be there, I don't. And he said, I don't want it to be another Kalen DeBoer situation where I commit there and then you're gone. He actually said it. 
basically. I mean, he said, you know, it would have been the same thing as my situation at, at Washington. Yeah. Wow. So you don't want to be bouncing around that much when you're, no. no. You know, at that age, you're trying to figure out your whole fucking future. Yeah. Quit That's, relying on a couple of guys. Yes. Just pick a place where you can be comfortable. Yes. Well, it, it, and he's a, if if we needed to fill any more spots on the defense, which I didn't really feel like we did, we added a bunch of depth on the back end. I felt like our defensive line was short up enough, but this just adds one more body to the pipeline of dudes that are going to be able to start replacing some of these guys when they when we start seeing a couple three and three and outs. Oh gosh, and I mean, because you, you're gonna you're gonna see Prince will if he. Makes a leap the way he did. If if um, he doesn't even need to make that much of a leap. If Cam Leonard makes makes or Lenhart makes a leap this second year, and those guys don't stall out in their sophomore season, those dudes are going to be t- being talked about all over the place, and it's going to yeah. be one more year, and they're both going to be gone. You know what? And you're going to have to have guys to fill in behind him. Two things. One, I hope that's exactly how it goes, because if they're performing like that, they fucking deserve it. Two, that also kind of brings back in the NIL money to see. Do they need to leave that early? Hey, look at what's going on at Ohio State right now. We'll, we'll, we'll kind of see some of that as it plays out, but there's dudes that more sh- talent in in the pipeline is not a bad thing. There's dudes that absolutely would be a top two round pick in this year's draft staying at Ohio State yep. this year. Yeah, you can't tell me NIL doesn't play a part in that. Yep, that's the only reason. It's the, they're they're getting paid the same, if not more, money than they would. Well, they're not going back for school. So they're not going back for school. They weren't there for school to begin <laughs> I with. I know. No. And they had somebody else taking their. Neither classes would I were. be. Like the former Ohio State quarterback said, "I didn't go there to play school." Yeah. What? Uh, who was the? So remind me, he's the safety that came out of New Jersey. That was originally committed to Wisconsin, decommitted from Wisconsin, and we somehow got him to come in as a walk-on. He's a three-star guy. But yeah. from what I understand, they love him. They love his size and they love his speed. You know, I I said this when I was looking at the list earlier. Is oh, it's the uh, Presty or something like that, isn't it? Kamir Prescott. Prescott. There you go. Yeah. Do we know much about him? No, <laughs> I, I don't. All I, mean, I all I know is they were excited to get him. Yeah, and, I mean, and I don't. I think it's it's speaking to our nil, and we keep hearing people keep talking about. His, his Sipple keeps talking about our nil like it's you know Sipple and Sean Callahan talk about it like it's a top five NIL in the country. Maybe it is. You're seeing guys like, uh, I saw a quote from uh, Bayer the other day that talked about how um, the other NILs in the country that he's had experience with or that he's looked into or that um, he's got friends that are associated with, they're not doing half the stuff as far as helping them because the way that they set up the 1890 Collective, they're helping them basically manage all this money and manage themselves as professionals Playing college sports, they're not just saying, "Here's a bag." No, bye. Which I think everyone expected. That's what NIL was going to be. Was mm-hmm. here's a bag. Now come play for us. Well, and, and, and some of them are doing that. You have to hope that that's not what schools are doing because that's not what the NFL does. Well, it's not the schools they, too. Just to make sure NFL PA. Sure, 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 sure. sure. <laughs> for all that stuff. I'm just saying you, you can't give a, an 18, 19 year old that kind of money no. and not give them guidance with it. Yeah, that has to just be a part of it. Yeah. As long as we aren't doing what Tennessee did, whatever the fuck that they did to get sued. Uh, I'm oh, they're not getting sued. Didn't they get in the trouble s- with the no, NCAA? No, no, no. Well, yeah, they're, get, they're in no, trouble no, no, with the NCAA. No, they're not in trouble with the NCAA. Yes, they are. They're, they're doing both. Yes, the they s- are. They got in trouble, and now they're suing. I was going to say, yes. the state attorney general for Tennessee, not ten, not associated with the University of Tennessee, is suing the NCAA. Yeah, that was that was a result but of because the, Tennessee because getting the in trouble. Because the NCAA is in... Is, get, is, Tennessee is in trouble with the NCAA. I guess I didn't. I yeah. guess I missed the beginning of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. T- Tennessee's doing some shady shit. Apparently, yeah. I didn't read much about it. <laughs> you can't tell me that shady shit's not going on. Of everywhere. course. Well, shady shit's always been going on. It's not new. <laughs> this isn't new. That's why I say the NIL is now it's legal. Like, yeah, it's now not, it's legal. Yeah. I think. I think now you're also seeing that there's it's, people are just playing fast and loose with it now. Yeah. I I saw a video today uh, that Tulsa head coach. At his press conference, he was asked about, uh, you know, recruits ask, talking about NIO money and stuff like that. And, you know, again, technically speaking, the coaches are not supposed to t- say, you know, NIO stuff. That's why I hard rolled my eyes when you just said that. I know. And so he, sh- he actually shared a text message conversation that he had with a recruit. And, he's, and it said something, and I'm mostly going to be paraphrasing this. And it said, uh, hey, coach. Uh, I'm not money hungry or anything like that, but I'm just curious on what kind of NIL package I can get with you guys. 
Um, I'm looking for, I've got three dogs and a girlfriend and I'm looking for about six to 7,000 a month. And the response that the coach had for the guy, the recruit was, well, my first thought would be is to get rid of the three dogs. And I don't know about the girlfriend. It just makes me think of Mike Leach. <laughs> like, where is Mike Leach right now? We need, we need Mike Leach back. God damn it. Miss him. They're fat little girlfriends. Yeah. <laughs> it was so funny. I was just like, okay. Let's spend less time talking about their fat little girlfriends. More time practicing. Oh my God! That's Mike Leach would have hilarious. so many good quotes oh, over the last. Uh, he only died two years ago. It's not like he didn't know what was going on. Yeah, but think about the things that have happened over the last couple of years. Yeah, I just thought it was. So I nice. would love to hear him respond to Nick Saban retiring. That would be fucking hilarious. Well, it, it would go on for like forty-five minutes. You know, what? it'd somehow be classy as fuck too. It probably would oh, be. Gosh, yes. I don't. I don't think there's anybody that would talk about Nick Saban. I mean, maybe there are, but I don't know if there's anybody that would talk about Nick Saban other than with reverence as he as he it makes his exit. Yes. That'd be crazy. Yes, he would. That'd be crazy. Is there anything else we want to say about additions and, and the changes? I mean, this class overall, I'm very happy with it. I don't really give a shit where we ended up in the rankings. We're never going to be one of those top five every year programs because we're not going to be attracting, you know, five or six. I'm not going to say star. ever because we've done it okay, before. Maybe not. Maybe not. Saying. Maybe not never, but. I just, I, and it I, won't be on a consistent basis, like what you no. said. Yeah, I just feel like we. Well, first of all, unless we're unloading every year the way that a Georgia, an Alabama does, mm-hmm. we're not going to have the roster space for it or the need for it. Yep, I think we did an amazing job addressing every need on our roster, and I don't even know where we missed other than you know for us we wanted to have added a fourth quarterback but it sounds like rule didn't want a, a yeah. fourth quarterback that that would be my biggest takeaway is that we obviously had a short list of what we needed and the coaches executed immediately and went and got what we well needed. we talked about it in the transfer show that we did previously where every everything that we brought up in the recruiting show in December that we said still needed to be addressed they addressed it in the transfer portal now the one other thing as far as scholarship guys and I know scholar. We've talked about it before. Scholarships are not non-existent anymore because you get an NIL scholarship if you don't get a real scholarship. But <laughs> scholarship guys, quote unquote, scholarship guys. We only signed one defensive lineman, and it was this new kid, this Will Hyde yeah. kid. So tech, we, we were really loaded at the. D- we were, but still bringing in the another young guy mm-hmm. to you know f- continue the. I mean, if for this feels like a, a backload. Continue the pipeline. Yeah, this feels like a backload. Yes, that's what that's what this feels like. This is not. I don't. I don't. You know, we had a need to see Prince Will and Cam Lenhart get on the yep. field last year. Now maybe he's going to be undeniable. Like I said about Dunn Riola, be undeniable. And this and guy is force the same your size. way, force your way onto the field. Fucking cool. Yeah, awesome. Like like that kid. Uh, what's his name? The DN white kid that got and ended up getting in. I think they kept his red shirt. They only let him play in four games, but he was. He was wrecking shop, and he was oh, that James Williams. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. like that kid finding him out of yeah. out of nowhere. He was a walk on kid. He was a, he he made himself undeniable mm-hmm. though, and so you do that. You you come in as a true freshman. You can do that, but it's nice to just know we've got an extra guy back there that's the same size, same build, same make. You know, we've got the new the newer model sitting back here waiting for you when this one has to leave. Yeah, we're we're, we're kind of in the middle of a uh, little project for the off season of a uh, top 50 for the upcoming season and I've already actually done my top 50. Have you? I might have to add this kid in there. Really? I mean, he's not going to be like top 30 or anything like that, but I might just throw him in the back end between 40 and 50 somewhere. Mm-hmm. Jet thinks he might see a little field this year. I don't know. I mean, see the field some this year. If, if guys like Prince Will and Cam Lenhard can do that, and the way, at the, the size way, that the they, way they and, like to rotate in, he'll see he'll see some blank. And, and this this kid yeah. is the same size as these guys are. True. Already. Yeah. Like hell yeah, he can play. Why not? Clearly, he's got a head on his shoulders. I dig it. I dig it. I'm excited about it. The only other thing that I think was an update to anything on this on this class was a couple of those. Uh, Games got played, a couple of the se- like senior bowls got played, mm-hmm. and it sounds to me like what we're getting from our boy uh, Carter Nelson up there in Ainsworth, it sounds to me like he is just an absolute freak athlete. At the Polynesian Bowl, he was the leading receiver in the game. I didn't watch a second of it. I, just, I, I didn't watch no, it. I, but I got the highlights. Just hearing about the process of it, 
I was pleasantly surprised because, I mean, I've said it a couple of times that I think he's more of a project than what pe- some people want to think, mainly for the transition from 8-man football to 11-man football. And it sounded like he did very well playing 11-man football down in Hawaii. So maybe it's well, not going to be as much Antonio of a project as, well. as possible. You yeah. know what? I trust Rule with a project. 100%. That is a freak athlete more than just about anybody. In the yep, country. and that's all they want. They, yeah. want the, they want the freak athlete. We'll teach them how to play yeah. the game. We want you to be have those unnatural skills that or, well the the, un, the uncommon skills that are very very natural, which and, is and the speed, good thing height, is athleticism. And the good thing is is he doesn't really have to play this year because we've no, got he doesn't have to. three good tight ends above him that have experience. Unless he's really good at quarterback, I don't know. <laughs> we better not get to fourth on the depth chart for that. <laughs> Jesus no. But yes, he's played quarterback. And this may be the most unbelievable night in Cornester football history. 